we are going to, we are planning a big party for him. Could you present that wood carving at the party and so So they was put in the backlog, uh, in the program book as the last, pro, last program of the whole thing. I was quite embarrassed. Not only that, they contact one of the local major newspaper and gave me an interview, devoted about two thirds of the whole page, talking my work, that, writing about me as a cover. That's the first time. Never expect that. It's important because because of this. This column is a former president Lee's weekly column. So when you, my interview will be put in the same, on the same page. That means something. So I frame it. Now, this person. I have finished this for you. I, we, we read this. When convinced that Secret Service is going to arrange an accident, they always arrange accident so they will not be accused of a murder or something. To kill his friend, the missionary decided he had no choice when he was very young. But to help well-known human rights leader, Professor Fung Yi from Taiwan, and he recently write, wrote a book, Fireproof Mouth, a missionary in Taiwan's white era. White era means that when Taiwan was under martial law for 38 years, from 1949 to 1987. <coughs> in which, in the book he said, in the book is a 65,000 word account of how becoming friends with Hung Hung led, led to a double life. One in which Miro, this is Miro, <coughs> taught church history in Taiwan at Presbyterian seminars, and the other in which he and his wife secretly collaborated with Peng and two of his former students in a variety of human rights activities, all of which were illegal, and some of which were considered capital crimes under martial law. When police showed up at their door on March the 3rd, 1971, Milo Rose and his wife became the first missionaries arrested since the nationalists took over the island in 1945. That's the end of World War II. His role in Pun's escape was not revealed until 2003 when Milo was invited back to the newly democratic Taiwan to be recognized for his human rights activities. Only in 2009 did he and Hung uncover the true reason for Milo's arrest 30 years earlier. That's what the imperial Taiwan was. Very dangerous. And the way, of course, they had to plan for quite some months or even more than a year or two. And one thing they planned is to dress him up like this. He studied in Japan. He went to Tokyo University. Of course, back then, Taiwan was under Japan for 50 years, and they all speak very, very fluent Japanese. And when he was a student at Tokyo University, because of air raid, he lost his left arm. So he has only one arm since his college year. And they dress him like this, and this is for people who believe that his hand was wounded somehow. If people notice at him uh, at the airport, the missile, he actually did not have an eye. And also, another interesting thing, they have to plan so carefully. They let him uh, take a flight with a group of Japanese tourists. So at the airport, he walked with the Japanese tourists, speaking with them 
and naturally in Japanese language. And he escaped. And he escaped, he flew to Hong Kong, or they had come back, back home. They had to Europe, to Switzerland, and so on and so forth. Several days after he had left Taiwan, the Kuomintang who was sent to watch him every day was still reporting, writing reports his daily life in Taipei. <laughs> in fact, he was already in Europe. See how this kind of thing worked. And I met him for the first time when he first came to the States after he escaped from Taiwan. I met him in 1972. He, he came to Houston when I was there to give a talk. Back then, he had to have a bodyguard. And we several people met him in his hotel room. And I brought his book, Taste of Freedom, for him to autograph. This red line, this red line, is 1972. Many years later, I know that he was coming to Cincinnati to give a talk at the international conference of some kind. Um, but I was in Taiwan, 2001. I asked Martha, my second daughter, to go to hear him with a book and ask him to autograph again. So things change, time change, this is what he said. So then, this is a professor I'm working on. On this side, I'm, I'm asked him to fill out this line about his life in a, a line or two about his life in Tokyo University, about his life when he was teaching at Taiwan University. He later became the chairman of political science department. About his declaration of self-determination that put him in trouble. About his perfect escape. His book said, perfect escape, the help from Thornberry. And about his home free after martial law. I'm still working on that. See, I have finished this area only. <laughs> and of course, I have more things to do in the future. This is one of them. I'm going to carve the four granddaughters. And also, Francis, who took a picture with <coughs> Colonel, Colonel Sanders in Kentucky as a baby. Oh, look at this one, this one. Frances was a uh, Miss Teen Cincinnati. It's not a swimsuit to Miss Teen, it's a, it's a talent, Miss Teen. See the dots in between? Miss Teen, Miss Ohio, Miss Teen Ohio. He, she was a citizen of Wyoming when she was in high school. And of course, actually I have long started it only that I put off Mrs. Francis, this is all grandchildren. I think all artists have Amish Prince works, right? <laughs> I have so many. See, I have lived this alone for 16 years, 16 years, and 16 years, 6 years, and 5 years, and 13 years. <laughs> I kept doing something new. <laughs> I put off something old. Um, yeah, and see, even Michelangelo's have finished Amish work except that his friends work worth much, much, much more than mine. <laughs> All right, that's the end of the talk. Any questions? And I have my work here, and I'll be glad to answer your questions. And the most important thing, come to join us, and uh, also come to our show in October. Could you explain a little bit about the kind of wood you use? The wood is most...